welcome to Wanted Down Under, the show that catapults her British family right across to the other side of the world to help them make the biggest decision of their life, whether to stay in the UK or to move to New Zealand. Sharon Cole separated from her husband Richard six years ago and wants a new life for herself and her boys. It's about a house that we shared and I think, you know, in one way it would be really good for me to have a, to do something completely different. She's tempted by a fresh start down under. Everybody's enjoying just living and I want to have that as well. But older son Oliver and his brother Alex aren't so sure. She wants to move on, she wants to drag us with her. It's got to be our decision as well if she's got to move. Sharon's concerned about taking the boys so far away from their father, Richard. They're the most important people in my life and their happiness matters to me more than anything. It's a long way to go when you're leaving loved ones behind. People are the most important thing. It's the people that make my place a home. The Coles have a long week ahead of them. Will they vote to stay in the UK or go where they're wanted down under? It's beautiful. With its magnificent landscape, warmer climate and small population of just over 4 million, New Zealand is many people's idea of the perfect place to get away from it all. And every year, around 87,000 people emigrate in search of that better life. But for all these families, how hard is the decision? And do they find what they're looking for? We've given another British family the opportunity to spend a week down under to see if it's all they dreamt it would be. After that, they'll have to make a decision one way or the other, whether to stay in the UK or to move to New Zealand. Sharon Cole lives with her two sons, 17-year-old Oliver and 14-year-old Alex in Shipley, Yorkshire. Sharon is considering leaving it all behind. She's been separated from Richard, her husband and father of her sons, for six years. She dreams of a new life in New Zealand. It, this house, in many ways, is a house, it has a lot of sad memories for me. I mean, because of Richard leaving and, and everything. And it's about a house that we shared. And I think, in, a, in one way, it would be really good for me to do something completely different. Sharon works in a hospice as a palliative care social worker, providing emotional and practical support to terminally ill patients and their families. Making the move down under would be difficult enough, so doing the same type of job might just provide the stability she needs. I want to stay in palliative care. I want to do this probably until I retire. It's rewarding because of the very nature of the work, and it's the kind of job where you get really close to people and you, you can really feel as if you're making a difference. If I couldn't find a similar job, that would probably be a reason not to go. I always thought of living abroad, and I've always thought, you know, where would I like to be? And everything I've heard about New Zealand, it's just so, it sounds like it's got all, a lot of the things that I love about England, like the scenery, um, and the same, it's the same size. I just think it may be that it's got more open spaces, a better quality of life. I like the fact that people spend more time outdoors. Fitness mad Oliver can see the benefits of a more outdoor life in New Zealand. It's got less people in it, it's less crowded. It's just a better area, I think. It's easier to get jobs, I think, because it's more, you know, there's more space for that kind of thing. But Sharon is the real driving force behind uprooting them all. The boys can see just how important it is to her. I don't think it's just about moving house. It's just everything in her whole life has been like the same place. She just wants to have a new adventure somewhere else. She just needs to start like again. She just needs a new happy lifestyle. She just continually wants a break from, her, from, from memories of this life. We're on holiday, she forgets everything. That when she comes back to it, it's like, oh, I, have, I remember all this. And it's just horrible, bad memories just creep up on her. I want her to have a new beginning, even if I'm not included in it. And I, I, I want her to be happy. 
Shipley has been home to the boys all their lives. Sharon's concerned about taking them away from their father and their friends. Will it be the right decision for them? My main concern is the boys because I think they're the most important people in my life and their happiness matters to me more than anything. And I'm frightened that I would do this for me and perhaps you know, they would get there and think, what's happened? You know, there's nobody around that we know, nothing's familiar anymore. Dad's a long way away, and I'm frightened that I might be, you know, wrecking their lives, I suppose, that that, that maybe I'll, I'll destabilise them in some way, because their security is really important. It's a really tough choice for Sharon. We're sending the Coles to the vibrant city of Auckland, situated on the northeast coast of New Zealand's North Island. Auckland is known as New Zealand's City of Sales, as it has more yachts per person than any other city in the world. It boasts only one million people and is New Zealand's largest city. There are plenty of opportunities to enjoy its unspot landscape, as well as its metropolitan lifestyle. With the Coles' possible budget of £185,000, they should be able to find a suitable property if they shop around. We found three possible lifestyles for our family, each one offering a brand new way of life for them to try on their budget. But which one will be the most suitable? Auckland City has a plentiful choice of homes, from high-rise apartments to old-style villas. But property prices in the centre have boomed in recent years, and the Coles would have to make do with less space than they have in the UK. This three-bed property is on the market for over £350,000. Too much for the Coles, but they could look to the nearby suburbs. Here, the houses are more affordable, and they'd still be close to the cosmopolitan lifestyle. It would only be a 20-minute commute to the city's hospices. So, very different from their life in the UK. But what about the second option? A home by the sea would offer the Coles a more laid-back lifestyle, as Auckland's coastline epitomises the calm and beauty that people come here for. But prices can be expensive, with this four-bed open-plan property going for over double the Coles' budget. Sharon's commute to work would take a little longer with this option, but Oliver and Alex would have water sport activities right on their doorstep. That looks very inviting. But what about the third option? Properties are a lot better value in the country and provide the tranquility and beautiful landscapes that Sharon longs for. Homes in the bush area of Titiwangi are full of character, like this four-bed luxury open-plan house. With the village centre boasting vibrant cafes, good amenities and a theatre, this should be just the place for arts lover Sharon. Her commute to work would take just half an hour. There are also good transport links for Oliver and Alex to get to the city centre. Three very different options there, all of them life-changing. So where did we decide to send the coals? With the promise of a good mix of country living, more affordable houses and a short commute to the city, we decided that the bush area in Titirangi would be the best option for the coals. We lined up a potential job for Sharon. I'll just show you in here. Yes, yes, this is really good. Nice and spacious. And a selection of housing options. Every room is like big and there's all these views. It's just brilliant. And threw them into the deep end of New Zealand life. But they have a tough week ahead of them as they try to make the biggest decision of their lives. I just realised how special the people in my life are and how much they mean to me. The Coles are finally making their trip down under. The journey from Shipley to Auckland is over 12,000 miles across three continents. None of them have ever been this far before, but even after a gruelling 30-hour journey, Sharon is still raring to go. I'm looking forward to seeing um, you know, how people work here and, and how it compares to what we do at home. I'm excited to see, the, the, just see everything. I'm not sure the boys are quite as enthused as Sharon. I'm tired, hungry, looking forward to sleeping. <laughs>
No time for rest yet. The Coles are straight off to check out their accommodation for the week. They'll be staying in a pretty bush area of Titirangi in West Auckland. The house is an open plan three bedroom home with plenty of space for the family to roam around. But first, Sharon's got to get the car in. Whoa, what are you doing? This is how you come in. This will be great for the car. <laughs> She finally makes it, and still smiling, she's off to check out the garden. Oh my goodness, just look at that view, Oliver. I just can't believe it's got this in the back garden. This is amazing. Let's hope the inside is just as good. Oh, I love this room. Just look at the view. I mean, this is just amazing. Because wherever you look, you can see the sea. I would just be in heaven living in this house. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I call this room. This room has a guitar in it. Have you seen this room? All the rooms are so light. Whoa! Seen the bath? <laughs> oh my goodness, that's tiny! <laughs> that's not a bath, that's a shower. <laughs> and Oliver has sorted out his mum's sleeping arrangements. Yeah, the mattress is ready. <laughs> Alex has spotted something else to whet his appetite. Yeah, I'm a hot dog. This is luxury, isn't it? I think this is now my favourite room. <laughs> so, after the excitement of the house, how is Sharon feeling? When you're actually here, it all seems possible, and you think it's fantastic, and I just want to be here. But will nerves about the week ahead get the better of her? I often get scared about things, but I think if I'm scared, I still have to do it. You have to make things happen. That's the way I live my life. But at the same time, I always think, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I letting myself in for? It looks like Sharon's up for the challenges ahead. But after the initial excitement of arriving, how are the boys really feeling? I prefer being in Britain because it's for just based on what I've seen so far, really. It's, it's, I'm more in my comfort zone. And you know, I know where everything is. It's, it's just easier. I can imagine coming here on a um, holiday and just spending a few days here. I couldn't imagine living here yet. If I was to go to New Zealand, as well as getting a job and everything, I'd have to learn the entire lifestyle I have. It'd just be a bit overwhelming to go through all that. The boys seem to have formed a strong first impression. Does this mean Sharon has her work cut out to convince them about a possible move? Back in the UK, the Coles live in a three-bed semi-detached house in Shipley. It's just big enough for the three of them, and ideally they'd like a bigger third bedroom for Alex. Their home is situated on the Yorkshire Moors, which Sharon loves, but she's ready for a change of scenery. In New Zealand, they'd be looking for a three-bedroom house full of character set in the countryside, but near to amenities. Sharon wants to be mortgage-free, and she has a budget of £185,000. So can they afford it all, or will they need to stretch their budget? Property One is a three-bedroom detached house in Titirangi village. On the market for around £170,000, it's easily within Sharon's budget. But will the inside be to their taste? It's been decorated by its owners with a definite retro style. Before they get inside, Sharon's already putting estate agent Cheryl through her paces about the exterior cladding. Now, as you can see, the exterior is... Uh... What, made of weatherboard. What is weatherboard? Is that made of wood? It's wood. Weatherboard yes. is wood. So it's weatherproof? It is weatherproof. <laughs> Typical material for building kiwi. So does it need repainting every year? Every year or every couple of years it will need a coat of paint. Does it like garden sheds? Maintenance. Then? <laughs> it's a lot more hard wearing than your garden shed. Finally, we're in. What will Sharon think of the decor? After all, she said she wanted character. Oh, it's got the old 50s style furniture as well. It has. It's it really in keeping with the era of the property. Yeah. So is that a, an open fire? It's yeah. it's a wood burner, yes. which is very typical again of Kiwi properties. That would be and nice if it was cleaned up. 
You've also got polished timber floors as well. Mm -hmm. I, quite, which I is... like the floors and I like the fireplace. Obviously the, the decor isn't to my taste at all, but I can see that it suits the house. I don't think the wooden floorboards are going to sell it. Let's see if the bedrooms are more to Sharon's taste. So this is one of the large double bedrooms. As you can see, you straight out, you look straight through the window, you've got the bush. There's not anything from 2010 in here, is there really? It's just out of date really, isn't it? I oh, know we're not much room for a wardrobe in here though, if you had a double bed. But there's room at this end as well for a wardrobe if you want to put a wardrobe in. Yeah. That might be a bit of a stretch for Sharon. What about Alex's bedroom? It's got a wardrobe, but is there enough room for a bed? You could get single bed, possibly a double bed in here. Size I don't single. think you get a double in... If you had a double bed in, it would you'd have to take if you that to climb time, over. You? Yes, you'd need to take that out. Yeah. yeah. Climb it's still, it's the bigger side. than Alexander's current room. <laughs> Alex doesn't seem too impressed. I think it's time to see what the outside has got to offer. Oh, this is nice. I, 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 love the, I like the open aspect. Good to see that there's something that Sharon likes, and perhaps Oliver will be taken by the outdoor sleeping arrangements too. Do you want to try out the hammock yeah. then? Go on, don't fall out. <laughs> get him carefully. I'll just get him on. Shall I open it, help you? No? There you go. You in? Right, I'll do you think you off. could... Uh, how do you think that would be? Yeah? Yeah, I'll get back to you. They hardly seem bowled over by property one, but until Sharon sits down and does her sums, she might not be able to afford to be so picky. For now, let's see what their verdict is. I think the inside um, is quirky and interesting, even though it's, it's not furnished in my style. Could you see yourself living here? Not really. I'd still have like a small room if we moved here. Yes. And everything is a bit just small. That seems to be an all-round no, then. But Alex has a final thought. I'd probably think of living here if you insulated that a bit more and just made that my room. Your bedroom? Yeah, and yeah. just put my bed and then all my stuff. Well, we could actually. Stuff. We could look at that. Yeah. We could turn it into a granny flat. It. No. I mean, it's, it's weatherboarded. Oh, granny like... flat? I mean a studio. <laughs> no, uh, all right, a, a teenager's pad. How yeah. would that be? That's better, not granny <laughs> flat. Because it's actually it's not much smaller than the house, is it? <laughs> Let's hope Property 2 not only brings them into the 21st century, but can give them that larger third bedroom for Alex. It's off to Langholm, 15 minutes drive away. This is a three-bedroom house on a good-sized plot of land. It's currently on the market for £190,000. Welcome to 22 Whiston Road. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, this is bigger. Feels more spacious. Do they have a dishwasher? No, there's no, no dishwashers. Well, you've got two. <laughs> <laughs> Over there. <laughs> They're standing close to the dishwasher. Well, the boys didn't seem too impressed by that idea. And Sharon's noticed that property two is low-lying and set in a valley with the stream running through it. She has a few questions for estate agent Edwina. Is there any flooding in this area? We've actually got flooding that we've down the bottom of um, Sandy's Parade. Yes, it is. There does seem to be a, appear to be quite a bit of flooding. So would this house be at risk? I'd say with the stream down here, you'd need to be careful and mindful of that. That doesn't sound like good news at all. It's straight out onto the balcony to see where the potential flooding might be. Uh, as I said before, there's a stream that runs down here. With all the rain that we've had, you can see it's certainly risen. So that's something you really need to be careful about. Yeah, I mean, I, I must say the risk of flooding is a, is a bit of a concern. Yeah. But I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. The garden is obviously well watered, but will the rest of the property be enough to convince Sharon and the boys? So this is one of the bedrooms? It is. This is the main room. Okay. Oh, and it has its own ensuite. Well, a good start on the bedrooms, but will they all be as big? Let's have a look in here. So this is used as a study, then. Mm, it is. So how many bedrooms does the property It's three have? bedrooms. Does this include this one? Mm, it oh. does. So this Slightly is on the tinier side. Yeah. Another cupboard for poor Alex, or maybe he could have Oliver's room. Oh, th this is a better size. It certainly is. It's a pity we can't get three bedrooms with two 
the other two bedrooms this size. This size. I'm not sure it's everything they're looking for. What do they make of it? I really like the setting. I think it's gorgeous. You know, I like the size of the house. It's, you know, even though the third bedroom is small, it has a much more spacious feel. But something like, the, if there was any kind of flooding risk, I wouldn't buy it. Oliver doesn't seem so bothered, and he's got more important things on his mind. I don't think it would be a big deal because the other house would probably get it before us, so we'd have some warning. <laughs> uh, I like the house, it's a lot more spaced out. It'd make a great party house, by the way, wouldn't it? Well, a hit with Oliver then, but Alex might need some more convincing, and he's got a concern about the decor. It would have to change a lot before I liked it. Just all that blue. It's just a bit <laughs> blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The risk of flooding and another small bedroom for Alex means this house isn't a winner. But we've got something up our sleeve that might just fit the bill. Property 3 is higher up and nearer to Titirangi village. It's a three-bedroom upside-down house where the bedrooms are downstairs and the living space upstairs. It's slightly over budget at £217,000, but with a negotiable price, it might be worth it. They meet up with estate agent Glenn and it's straight upstairs to the living room and Sharon sees something she likes straight away. Beautiful view. This is about as noisy as Langholm ever gets. This must be a nice spot to sit. Yeah, that's a gin and tonic corner. Yeah. Sharon's got a great view, but the big question hangs on Alex's bedroom. Will it be big enough for a bed and Alex? Which wall is six feet long then? So a single bed would go down this way? It would fit there, would it? Well, how wide is it from here to the, the end? Uh, without a tape measure, I couldn't no, tell I'm you. I'm just wondering, would it, be, would it be long enough to fit no, single? Well, it would probably it fit just there. there. I would think it would go that way. That's like what that. I was thinking. That's the longest wall. I'd be happy with that room. It's, it's just, just brilliant. That's fantastic news. Alex doesn't mind having the box room. Let's see if the other rooms can suit Sharon's close inspection. And unusually, they're downstairs. This bed, how would this work for you? Yeah. It's OK, but I, I prefer my windows lower down. Would you? Yeah. Mm. I think because I like to be able to. Light, yeah, well, no, just because if you're actually sitting on the bed, you can't. S yeah. You can see above you, but yeah. you can't see yeah. at eye level. Yes. It's okay as a, as a second bedroom. Mm. Let's hope the master bedroom can bring a smile to Sharon's face. Oh, now this is better. Now this is good. Yeah. Good now you see, I can bedroom. see outside now, which is which is yeah. what I was meaning. Yeah. So a good that, size a, master. That's lovely. Loads of wardrobe space. Yeah. We might actually have a winner here, but Oliver doesn't quite know what to make of the upside down aspect. I just don't know what to say on it. I'm baffled because I've never seen a house like this before. So I don't know what to say. Well, Sharon likes the views and Alex loved the small room. So does this mean we're in business? It's time to see what they really think of Property 3. It's just like so good. It's just brilliant. You were like, quite excited when we walked up the drive. Yeah. He wanted to buy it before we'd even come inside, didn't you? You said, it's awesome, buy it, Mum, I'll come to New Zealand now. <laughs> which is, <laughs> which, which enc is encouraging me, because if we find the house that's right for all of us, you know. Oliver and Alex clearly have different tastes, but they both seem to have found their ideal home. Although I'm not quite sure Sharon's been convinced. So, time to vote on property. I like the fact that all the houses in New Zealand are individual and that they're all in lovely settings. I'm worried about the fact that they're not as solidly made as English houses. Comparing them to British homes, British homes are of smaller spaces. In New Zealand, but they're all different and they all have fantastic views. I'm going to pick New Zealand. New Zealand. Well, I'm going to vote right now with the UK. This is potentially really bad news. Sharon's the driving force behind making the move to New Zealand and she's already got misgivings about how life here would be. Let's hope this isn't the shape of things to come. <laughs> then 
there's a lot at stake to making the move to New Zealand. Not only would Sharon be taking the boys away from their father, she'd also be moving away from all that she's ever known. So, after the disappointment of Kiwi property, it's really important that she feels confident that New Zealand can offer them all a better lifestyle. They've come to the Hibiscus Coast to spend some time as a family. They're going to experience an outdoor thermal spa, something they wouldn't be able to do back in Shipley. Straight away, the boys are putting their mum to the test, whether she'd really be willing to take the plunge down under. I feel like I'm going to get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not pushing me. You're not pushing me. I'm going to hit you if you ask Paul. I can do without a challenge like this. Come on, Sharon. If you're not able to attempt a water slide, can you really be ready to make the move down under? Alex is a real gentleman and kindly shows Sharon that it's not that scary. Oh but I'm not sure she's entirely convinced. It's called Bob's mistake for a reason. <laughs> it means that you find out too late that you shouldn't have done it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's not funny. <laughs> it's <a> funny, Oliver. <laughs> she's a good sport, but she's not exactly doing it of her own will. <laughs> Go on then, Oliver. Show your mum how it's really done. Water slides are not my favourite thing. <laughs> and they scare me to death. But I thought I've done it. I feel proud of myself. <laughs> it's all about new challenges, New Zealand. Can we go on some more now? <laughs> Perhaps I could just go for a swim now. <laughs> Sharon's proven she can do it. Now it's time for something a little more relaxing. But the boys are still looking for action and they've found the black hole. I don't think Sharon would have enjoyed that one. It's been a fun afternoon and Sharon was able to relax too. So, what did the boys enjoy? Watching my mum scream. Yeah, pushing it down the slides. Coming away with them is great because I think it helps us to get closer because we do things together and they have fun. I like to see them giggling and laughing and making them happy, which is why I put myself through these torturous water slides. <laughs> The lifestyle here is just completely different to London. People's way of looking at life is different. Everybody's enjoying just living. And I want to have that as well. But Oliver knows that there's more to this trip than just fun for his mum. She needs a new start, she needs a new beginning, she needs a new life. She wants, she wants uh, you know, a new family life. Um, my parents are split up and after that everything she knew and wanted is kind of split. But, but she's just got me and Alex and the family's a bit more separated than it was. I don't think she can stand really living that far away from us. Because obviously when my dad left she hasn't got a partner to be with so she's trying to hold on to us even more. Because she's trying to hold on to the closest to her because she'll think she'll lose him in some sort of way. It's difficult from him but I do feel I need to move on emotionally yeah and maybe that is one of the reasons you know that maybe it would be great for me because when I'm somewhere like this I feel I, I actually don't think about the past I just I'm, I'm experiencing everything for the first time and it makes you feel really alive when I was younger and I wasn't in love with anyone this is how I used to feel I used to live for now you know and I want that feeling back again it's really tough for Sharon to decide whether to move down under, but time spent with her boys in New Zealand fills her with optimism. So how will they vote on lifestyle? There's lots of fresh air, people are outdoors and smiling. I think we're all agreed. New Zealand! New Zealand! New Zealand! <laughs> Zealand. 
At home in Yorkshire, Sharon works three days a week in a hospice. She earns £13,000 as a palliative care social worker and provides patients and their families with emotional and practical support. I'm just ringing to see how things are going. In palliative care, I think I've found my niche. I love it. I love the job. I love. I think I'm, I do it well and that gives me a lot of satisfaction. If I couldn't find a similar job, that would probably be a reason not to go for me because if I was doing a different job again, I think I'd be going backwards, whereas right now I think I'm in the right place in terms of career. Work has kept Sharon going since her breakup with Richard and although she loves it, she needs a change. I may not have moved away from Yorkshire, but I have travelled extensively. And every time I go away, I feel fully alive in a way that I don't when I'm at home. At home, everything's much the same and it carries on. You know, every day's the same as the one before. And although there are things I do that I love to do, like going to literature festivals and travelling and, and visiting people, the day-to-day -day is the same. Nothing changes. I'm just getting older. But when I go away, I'm just me. And I just feel like um, that life is more full of possibilities. For Sharon to really make that break and start a new life for herself and her boys, she'll need a good job. She's off to the Mercy Hospice in Auckland. There are only 250 palliative care social workers in the UK. In New Zealand, there are potentially fewer. So it might not be easy to find a job. Meeting the head of the family support team, Tim Hurley, and social worker Marie is going to be crucial for Sharon. And she's straight down to business. For me, I want to find out whether the, you think there might be possibilities about getting a post in yes. a social, as a social worker here. Yes. Social work in hospices is quite new here in New Zealand. And my colleague, who's been um, with the hospice here five years, she was one of the first social workers to be involved, um, employed by a hospice. But now it's, it's really a growth area. And I'm the second social worker in this hospice. And hospices all through Auckland and the rest of the country are getting social workers. So they're that really... sounds like really good news. <laughs> yes, it is. So, so it is a real growth industry yeah. in terms yeah. of people um, seeing what contribution that social workers can make. Well, it seems there could be quite a lot on offer in terms of work in Sharon's field. How much would they earn? It's around about $55,000, um, and that perhaps might vary a little depending on the organisation, like the district health boards may pay a little more than what hospices pay. That's fair enough. How does that compare to well, the UK? Well, it sounds very similar. OK, yeah. Well, that's great news. Sharon can feel more assured about work. <laughs> Meanwhile, Oliver is spending the day with Auckland's Coast Guards. He's being put to the test. Oliver is just starting out in the world of work and is desperate to join the emergency services. Auckland is home to New Zealand's largest port. The Coast Guards there are one of the busiest and most exciting emergency service units in the country. They have 18 full-time employees and a thousand volunteers working for them. And on a busy day, they can have up to 42 call-outs. Oliver wouldn't be able to do this in Shipley, so if he's looking for an adventurous career, this could be right up his street. First, he's got to learn his left from his right. Starboard off. So has Oliver got that? It's time for his life-saving skills to be put to the test. Come on board. Behind the bar. Starboard side. Just in front of the bar. For the to right side. Okay. Yeah. Give my cattle, make sure he's all right. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Sounds really, really dramatic if that was a real human being. Just zooming past them, you know. But, um, yeah, it looked like a good job to do, really, I think. So it's a lot of action involved, really. Maybe Oliver's found something to convince him to make the move down under. But there's one more test. It's his turn at the helm. See you, buddy. One o'clock. 
coming right up on your bow, straighten up. I want to get it on the right side though, don't I? Yeah. Starboard side. That's this side. Yes. Yeah, He's got the boy in sight, but he needs to be careful. Oh, I'm about to run him over. Where's it gone? I think he killed it. Oh, here it is. Well done, we didn't have to call the helicopter after all. So what do our experts make of Oliver's first day at sea? For his first attempt, it was pretty good, actually. You've never driven a boat before? No, 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 no it's pretty good, dear. That was fun. Can do that again. <laughs> Back across town, Sharon's tour around the hospice is going well. But this is our chapel. Come and have a look. And there seem to be plenty of similarities between work in New Zealand and in the UK. It is a nice space, and um, often people just wander in here and just have a bit of, you know, quiet time. We've had a couple of weddings here, and yeah, and we so, have them in. Yes, yeah. Come on, and I'll take her. Meeting Sharon, I think she's got a lovely, warm personality. I think she would fit in well to the to the kind of people who, who work here, and I think that she could provide some some experience and some leadership in areas that we've thought perhaps we'd like to do that we're not yet doing. So I think she'd be great asset to um, any hospice environment where she was here. Yeah to show you in here. This is one of our um, small family rooms where people just come and sit or oh, spend time. Nice. Yeah. This hospice could be anywhere. You know, the people, it's the people that make the, the work enjoyable as much as the job itself. And they seem to be the same all around the world. It was really interesting to talk to Tim and Marie and to find out that they do so many things the same way that we do in England and that, you know, they're approach to their work is the same, their holistic philosophy is the same and what's really encouraging is that they're looking for social workers in, in the Auckland area. Coast Guard Radio, Coast Guard Radio, this is ZMR 6666, Trillion Rescue Alpha, copy. It's been a successful day for Sharon and as the Coast Guards return to base, Oliver wants to know more. Is it just work experience that you start off to get in this sort of thing? Uh, no matter which unit you go to, if you just sign, sign up and want to be a volunteer, uh, we pretty much put you through as much training as we possibly can, which gets you right through from you know, a newbie uh, right to an operational crew. So Oliver seems inspired, but it's time for Sharon to make her vote on work. Hey, this is a really difficult one for me because I work with a lovely bunch of people in, in the UK. Um, I love them to bits and it will be a wrench to leave them. But today I felt energised and excited, so I'm going to vote for New Zealand. Moving to New Zealand involves massive financial as well as emotional decisions. And the Coles need to take into account the cost of living in Auckland, as well as what they'd make on their UK home. The Coles house is a three-bedroom property, which Sharon bought with husband Richard when the boys were little. She now owns it outright and hopes it's worth £185,000. We sent in to estate agents to give her their valuations. Fairly typical sort of size for a semi-detached this era. Nice fireplace. Really nice room, very light, got some of the original stained glass. Some people might feel that they would like to make it more contemporary, even knock through to the kitchen. Right. The size of the kitchen, obviously, doesn't really fit with modern living. Some people would choose to knock through now and make that really nice, one big dining kitchen. So, let's see what's out here. Oh gosh, the, po the porch is a mess. We have what was originally a sunroom. However, it is being used at the moment as a general storage space. So I would have to say that in order to really sell this as a feature, it would need to be emptied. Uh, this is a small room. This will put off some potential buyers. Yeah, a bit of a stumbling block here, really. It could be an office, though. Hmm, complete mismatch. A boy's room with a girl's wallpaper. In fact, I'm what? sure I remember this paper. I think we had some of this in our house in Bradford in the early 1980s. No, it wasn't. It was 1991 when I first put that paper in the old house. Oh, this is a better room. Nice size, uh, nice views uh, out of the window. I think that certainly uh, is a nice feature. 
it's nice to see that they have redone the bathroom and it's got all the right features. Bath, good size shower cubicle with a rain head, fully tile. Yes, very nice. This is a good selling feature. I'm glad she likes the bathroom. I chose that. You've got a house here which is really going to appeal to families. So families will look at it, decide to perhaps change it rather. Uh, the property does require some decorative improvement in places and also the third bedroom um, is very, very small. So I think that might put off some buyers. If the vendor here wants a quick sale, then I would say you're probably more likely to have to push on to about 160, 165 and probably have to come down from that too because people are expecting you to allow for the work that he's doing to modernise it. For a quick sale, I would suggest um, 160,000. Uh, at that level, I do feel there will be a good level of interest. It's dropped a lot then. I thought it was worth more than that. I expected that it would probably be about 185 at least. But I don't understand what needs modernising. I've done the bathroom, I've done the kitchen, I've put in a fireplace in the living room. I've done loads to it, really. So I'm really surprised that she thinks it needs work. Well, Sharon wasn't too pleased with that, but she can still be mortgage-free. It will depend whether they can afford to live off her salary. So we've prepared a comparison of Sharon's UK and New Zealand expenses to see if she can afford a life down under. Oh, my goodness. At first glance, this is really worrying to see that my food bill would double. Let me see. Goodness me. Organic chicken. £12.35 in New Zealand and only £7.32 in, in England. The organic steak is twice as expensive in New Zealand. Apples are about a pound a week more. Carrots, twice as much almost. It's a massive difference. I'm just staggered. Not a great start. How will other expenses fare? New Zealand, this is good news. <laughs> Gas and electric is about half the price that it is in England, which is great. And council tax is less. Petrol is a lot cheaper, so maybe actually it might balance out. But there are some hidden costs. Adults pay up to £25 per GP visit. Right, and Alexander would only cost £19 a visit. Well, we just have to stay healthy then and keep eating the organic food. And we won't need to go to the gym. <laughs> gym membership would cost me £64 a month instead of £45. Ah, well, but I'd be able to walk a lot more here, wouldn't I? So that would <laughs> just have to do, do my exercise outside and maybe swim in my friend's pools instead of in the gym. Sharon would earn a higher salary in New Zealand, but would it be enough to make the move affordable? Without the gym membership, it's going to cost me an extra £54 a month. So I suppose you've got to just offset one against the other, really, and work out what you're willing to compromise on. I mean, for me, I wouldn't compromise on my food. Maybe I could work a couple of extra hours a month or something to make that difference up. £54 a month isn't too big a difference, really. So how will Sharon vote on the cost of living? Taking into account, the food is far more expensive here, which is a big shock, but gas and electric is cheaper, and I won't need to go to the gym. I will vote for New Zealand. Back in the UK, Sharon's friends are a huge part of her life. And since the separation from Richard, they've played an even bigger role, supporting her emotionally through some tough times. Thinking about making the move down under and leaving them behind won't be an easy decision. So we've arranged for Sharon to meet up with a local social group in the artsy Auckland suburb of Devonport. Hello Sharon, I'm Liz. Hi Liz. And this is Andre, Heather, and Terry, Bob, Paul, Gwyneth. Hello. Hi, everyone. Without a partner by your side, it can be daunting meeting a group of new people. But Sharon's made a connection with Gwyneth, and it even turns out that she's visited Sharon's hometown. So I did a big tour over there. Where did you go? Yorkshire, Bradford. Oh, Bradford. I live in Bradford. It's a small world. Oh, I love that world. I love the countryside. Well, if you ever come to England, you can stay with me. Well, I'd love to. Right, so what are we going to hear? Well, I wonder what the fish of the day will be. Do you like to go and find out, Kerry? 
Ang kuminain. Across town, the boys are happily chilling out. They seem pleased that Mum is making new friends, but they're not sure what to make of everything. Yeah, Mum's making friends, yeah. It's a good thing. Um, obviously, you've got to have good relationships here to get to know people. It's, it's a big part of life, I think. It's the main part of life, really. When she gets back, she'll have all these things that she'll know she's leaving behind, because that's kind of really gone from her mind in this week. You know, all she's done is she's got baffled by what's here and completely forgotten about what, what the consequences of that coming here are going to be. I don't like really being taken out of my comfort zone because I like know everything in England and I know where everything is. Now like I'm here and I've spent like almost a week here now, it's a lot more than I expected. I'm not completely either at the moment. She wants to move on, she wants to drag us with her. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's got to be our decision as well if she's got to move. Um, so that's going to make things twice as hard as well. The boys really aren't convinced, and unless Sharon can feel they'll be happy to make the move, will she really be able to do it? But for now, Sharon's enjoying time with her new friends and is even opening up to them about her feelings on making the move. Sometimes it seems like a really scary idea, you know, the thought of travelling such a long way from home. And the only way to find out is to actually come here and get to know people. And I think people are the same wherever you are. If you've got good friends, then that feels like home, doesn't it? Exactly. So most of our parents did the same journey as you're talking about. So people feel an affinity with England, mm. don't they? And that makes you feel as if it would be a place you feel comfortable. Everyone's here. Everyone's here. The, fa the Fano. What's that mean? Fano is mouldy for family. The mouldy. 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 Mary Oh, the. You call them mouldy. You gotta speak the lingo. Why do you call them mouldy? Mouldy. <laughs> it's, <correct for> <laughs> the yeah. it's wonderful. It just opens up your world when you meet new people. And I think it's good when you can actually find even one person that you think you can get along with because then you realise that wherever you are in the world there are people that you can meet and, and become friends with and, and that makes all the difference because wherever, you, wherever your friends are is where home is for me. But how will Sharon vote? Friends are really important to me and I've got some wonderful friends in England. But friends are friends wherever you are, and the people here are lovely. So I'm going to vote for New Zealand. The Coles have really embraced their week in Auckland, but how will they respond to hearing messages from friends and family? Hi, Hi Sharon. Sharon. Hello, Sharon. Hi, Alan. Hi Alex. <laughs> she's very kind, very caring. Uh, she's a fabulous mother and she's a great friend. Can't speak out more highly of her because she's just, she's coped with everything. She really has. Things that have been thrown at her through her life. She's unbelievable really. It's untrue. I just love her to bits. <laughs> She is constantly cheerful and lifts the mood if you're feeling a little bit down anyway, and that's really quite important in our line of work. Alex is probably the craziest guy I've ever met, and the awesomest. He's really nice, and he's kind, and he's funny. Just a great friend. Epic, to use one of his words. <laughs> oh. I suppose it's the being there, it's somebody being there. It's Sharon's loyalty for me. I would miss that sort of, I don't know, the buzz that I get from physically being in the same room as Sharon. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be very hard to adjust. It'll be hard to not have her here. And the fact that she's going to be so far away is uh, it's going to be odd. She's a really, really good pal. I'll miss her desperately. I would really miss him, because it'd be just like, it wouldn't be the same without him, we'd have one less friend and like all our other friends would be really upset as well. Um, I, I would not want to go, I'll be honest, <laughs> but that's for, purely being selfish. I like things to be as they are and I'd like Sharon to stay here, to be honest. The time's probably right for her. You know, she's, she's had quite a lot of sadness in her life these past few years and I think she's, she's now 
perhaps getting to a point where, you know, she can turn her life around. And she's a, a real go-getting girl. You know, if, if there's something that she chooses to do, she, she will go ahead and do it. I think she's had things in her life and I think she deserves this chance for her and her boys, if it's the right thing for her. We're all really missing you over here and it's not the same without you. So. Please come back soon. I do hope that you're having a good time. I always want you to have a good time. But I am being selfish and I want you to come back to me. I hope it's an adventure for you, but one that you'd like to return from. Just know that I love you and I'm going to miss you. Bye, Sharon. Oh. Whatever you want to do, darling, we'll back you up. You don't have to feel as though you're on your own if you get stuck or anything. We're always here. Uh, uh, but I can't imagine that you ever would need any help because you're so competent and you just get on with life and everything would work out fine for you. I'll miss you if you still. Bye. Oh dear. <laughs> realise how special the people in my life are and how much they mean to me and it's it's wonderful to hear that I, they think the same about me I'm thinking that I want to be in two places <laughs> I want to be here for the for the boys I think it's it would be really good for them I just hope that if we come here that I can afford to go back as much as possible and keep those relationships going. Because the bonds are really strong now. And, you know, it's relationships that matter to me more than anything. The thought of taking the boys away from their father continues to haunt Sharon. I can't be everything to them. I want to be, I, I'd love to be, but they need a, they need a father as well as a mother. I've always believed that both parents were equally important, and especially for boys. I would think, have I taken away something really important in their lives? So it's, it's such a big decision. But I know if we do it, we've got to do it in, in, the, in the next two years, because otherwise they'll be, you know, doing things over in, in the UK, and it won't be possible for us all to get a visa and come here. So it, it's, it's a real dilemma, it really is. Alex's doubts have been rekindled after seeing his friends. Like, watching that, I don't really want to go as much. Like, I'd rather just stay in England because of all my friends and everything. But yeah, this week you've really loved it, haven't you? I know, you? but I don't really want to leave England. Yeah. What about you, Oliver? Yeah, I'd be fine coming here. You'd like, you know, I think you can see a lot of positives for you, can't you? Yeah, missing Dad probably wouldn't bother me too much. As he's left me at too early an age for me to really care, really, so. But he still cares about you. Yeah. Leaving friends and family behind is always going to be the hardest part and Oliver's reaction about his dad doesn't come as a surprise to Sharon, but it cuts the deepest. When Oliver's dad left when he was 11, Oliver was traumatised. Oliver was really distressed for a long, long time. And I think Oliver really tried everything he could to persuade his father to, to come back and to be there for him and, and he felt he wasn't, so... Um, he feels like his dad's not there for him, so... He's not really... You know, he wants to be the tough... Give, give the, have this strong, tough exterior that says he doesn't care. But I know, deep down, he does. And he's looking... He's looking for, for what he's lost. That's why he thinks if he comes here and he makes some good friends, maybe he'll find what he's missing from his dad. And do you think that? What do you think? I think maybe he would. It's also a question of what Sharon feels she needs at this stage in her life too. It's almost like I'm stuck in the past. 
My house is the same house that I've always lived in um, throughout my married life, so it's full of memories, sad memories, really more than, than happy ones. And it's taken me a long time to come to terms with what happened. I mean, he was the love of my life, and, and for a long time I hoped that he would come back. I think as time's gone on, I've realised that's not going to happen. I feel braver and stronger. I've changed in the last few years, and now I think I've reached a stage where I have to look to the future and think, well, maybe this is what's right for all of us now. For Alex, though, he feels he has more to leave behind, and it's almost impossible for Sharon to know what's best for them all. It would be really hard if, if, if one wants to go and one wants to stay, and I don't think they're quite ready to be independent. That would be a really tough one. It's the end of their week-long experiment in New Zealand. It's been full of new experiences and they've had the opportunity to spend quality time together as a family. Sharon's had the chance to discover that New Zealand could provide her with a new beginning. It's time for the final vote. Will Oliver and Alex give the answer Sharon is hoping for? England. I know two of us have voted for New Zealand and Alexander, you voted for the UK. But we're going to go home and talk about it some more. Look at what courses are here for Alexander when he goes to university. And I think when that time comes, it will be right for us all. Oh, a split decision. The Coles have had a great time in Auckland and love what the country has to offer in terms of lifestyle and job prospects. Perhaps Alex will change his mind. Well, if not, I'll go with them. To our own South Coast, next on BBC One, searching Britain's empty homes, then raising funds for a school skiing trip... Don't talk to me about the snow, thank you. It's Cash in the Attic at 11.30. Welcome to Wanted Down Under, the show that catapults her British family right across to the other side of the world to help them make the biggest decision of their life, whether to stay in the UK or to move to New Zealand. Sharon Cole separated from her husband Richard six years ago and wants a new life for herself and her boys. It's about a house that we shared and I think in, a, in one way it would be really good for me to, have a, to do something completely different. She's tempted by a fresh start down under. Everybody's enjoying just living and I want to have that as well. But older son Oliver and his brother Alex aren't so sure. If she wants to move on, she wants to drag us with her. It's got to be our decision as well if she's got to move. Sharon's concerned about taking the boys so far away from their father, Richard. They're the most important people in my life and their happiness matters to me more than anything. It's a long way to go when you're leaving loved ones behind. People are the most important thing. It's the people that make my place a home. The Coles have a long week ahead of them. Will they vote to stay in the UK or go where they're wanted down under? It's beautiful. With its magnificent landscape, warmer climate and small population of just over 4 million, New Zealand is many people's idea of the perfect place to get away from it all. And every year, around 87,000 people emigrate in search of that better life. But for all these families, how hard is the decision? And do they find what they're looking for? We've given another British family the opportunity to spend a week down under to see if it's all they dreamt it would be. After that, they'll have to make a decision one way or the other, whether to stay in the UK or to move to New Zealand. 
Sharon Cole lives with her two sons, 17-year-old Oliver and 14-year-old Alex in Shipley, Yorkshire. Sharon is considering leaving it all behind. She's been separated from Richard, her husband and father of her sons, for six years. She dreams of a new life in New Zealand. This house, in many ways, is a house, it has a lot of sad memories for me. I mean, because of Richard leaving and, and everything. And it's about a house that we shared. And I think, in, a, in one way, it would be really good for me to do something completely different. Sharon works in a hospice as a palliative care social worker, providing emotional and practical support to terminally ill patients and their families. Making the move down under would be difficult enough, so doing the same type of job might just provide the stability she needs. I want to stay in palliative care. I want to do this probably until I retire. It's rewarding because of the very nature of the work, and it's the kind of job where you get really close to people and you, you can really feel as if you're making a difference. If I couldn't find a similar job, that would probably be a reason not to go. I always thought of living abroad and I've always thought, you know, where would I like to be? And everything I've heard about New Zealand, it's just so, it sounds like it's got all, a lot of the things that I love about England, like the scenery um, and the same, it's the same size. I just think it may be that it's got more open spaces, a better quality of life. I like the fact that people spend more time outdoors. Fitness mad Oliver can see the benefits of a more outdoor life in New Zealand. It's got less people in it, it's less crowded. It's just a better area, I think. It's easier to get jobs, I think, there, because it's more, you know, there's more space for that kind of thing. But Sharon is the real driving force behind uprooting them all. The boys can see just how important it is to her. I don't think it's just about moving house. It's just everything in her whole life has been like the same place. She just wants to have a new adventure somewhere else. She just needs to start like again. She just needs a new happy lifestyle. She just continually wants a break from, her, from, from memories of this life. We're on holiday, she forgets everything. That when she comes back to it, it's like, oh, I remember all this. And it's horrible, bad memories just creep up on her. I want her to have a new beginning, even if I'm not included in it. And I, I, I want her to be happy. Shipley has been home to the boys all their lives. Sharon's concerned about taking them away from their father and their friends. Will it be the right decision for them? My main concern is the boys because I think. They're the most important people in my life and their happiness matters to me more than anything. And I'm frightened that I would do this for me and perhaps, you know, they would get there and think, what's happened, you know, there's nobody around that we know, nothing's familiar anymore, Dad's a long way away. And I'm frightened that I might be, you know, wrecking their lives, I suppose, that, that, that maybe I'll, I'll destabilise them in some way because their security is really important.